उता जान्छ हुन्छ नि इट्स लाइक ब्याक एन्ड फोर्थ के हुन्छ नि त्यो सस्टेन नै हुन चाहिँ हुन्छ नि त्यसको लागि चाहिँ के कस्तो कमिटमेन्ट चाहिन्छ होला कि हुन्छ नि अर पानी उम्ला छैन नि पानी छचलक्या मात्रै छ हजुर पानी छचलक्यालाई उम्ला भन्नै मिल्दैन हजुर है त्यही त मैले त्यस्तै भन्न खोजिरहेको थिएँ के पानी छचलकिरा छ पानी उम्लिने बित्तिकै बाफ बन्छ क्या त्यो त्यहाँ त्यो देर इज नो इन बिट्विन द्याट नि त ओके न अनि त्यो पानी उम्लिसकेपछि अब आई डोन्ट बिलिभ इन लेटिङ गो आई आई डोन्ट बिलिभ इन लेटिङ गो आई बिलिभ इन बिइङ आई बिलिभ इन बिइङ कम्प्लिटली एन्ड अनेस्टली एन्ड ट्रुली इन द मोमेन्ट If you are truly in the moment there is no sense of um possession and there is no sense of letting go. Oh, too. Because you are not trying to create something for the future or you are not trying to create something out of the past. Maybe you take information but you are being, okay? You are there. Of just stay rook. You know, does tree wake up in the morning and think about letting go? No, do dogs think about letting go? No, no. It's only a human condition, you know, where we are trying to let go of something. Yeah, what what does let go mean? What are we trying to let go? Is it know, even possible it to, to let go? go? Where is it supposed to go? That's what I always wonder. Where 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 will it take you? So the letting go, one. I think the 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 sense of letting go or the true sense of letting go means be be in the moment. If it's a moment of sadness be 100% sad but but actually be with that sadness and then the sadness will become your greatest gift it will become a privilege that you only receive because the way you are sad there can be no one else that can be sad like that right was there any the people who can be sad and be in the moment are artists are philosophers are the pillars of humanity you know if if they are consumed by sadness then they make use of it and create art out of it so when you know van gogh is painting and he goes mad and he cuts his own ears and that's a moment of sadness but in that moment of sadness he surrendered to whatever was happening to him only but he had so many moments of sadness He trained himself to be sad. Because he had so many mo- moments of sadness. See, that's the difference. He was a highly mel- melancholic person. His brother was highly successful. He never got success in his life. He only became successful once he died or around, you know, his later period of time. And then he died a miserable life. But what he did <laughs> why he is regarded as the greatest artist is because he used his sa- sadness. Yeah. And n- not many people can do that. Uh, And at times it might also create suffering in life. Hmm. And we should not see suffering as something bad. So we can think about Nietzsche, you know, Nietzsche died because of syphilis. Hmm. He he was the prime philosopher to start the modern movement of freedom. I know he was the person who declared that the god was dead. And and what he meant was that there is no one dictating you. There is no one giving you things for you to feel good or bad about. You are your own person. You are your own Zarathustra. And in Zarathustra um does speak Zarathustra he talks about the superhuman. And superhuman ko ki hunchha the superhuman is who is he is in the moment and in the moment there is no letting go to me if if you are in this moment completely truly honestly 100% what can you let go <laughs> it's not really possible <laughs> actually See? actually when you're completely absorbed in the present moment it actually feels like you're in a whole different world and it can't even be possibly described by the too- mind Every at any time moment you try to dis- describe the what is the present moment it becomes not the present But moment. The mind is so it's like always shattering. It's it's showing you something or taking you somewhere or oh. showing these to people whom you haven't even met or I don't know so the way the mind works you know it's like it absorbs information from the present moment and it's keep it inside and then it 
it even if we do not even if I do not want to like look at the information it just keeps on repeating so many of those information and it's it's kind of strange because it's like I have no control over my own mind and that's kind of sad I don't know that's just, okay now I'm like why do you want to have control over your mind Mind can be like your best friend or your yeah, greatest worst, enemy. Yeah, worst, worst enemy. Okay, we have to first address the fact that we are talking about something which might mean three different things yeah, to three of us. No. Yeah, exactly. Just tell That's us the answer. No, I'm not. I I don't have answers. <laughs> yes, you do. I have potent questions <laughs> that might enable answers <laughs> that you can see for yourself, right? I don't know. Some a part of our mind, like our brain, is actually just devoted to, like controlling the function of our bodies and and including like our primal brain that does control like this moment and our instinct but something about the do you think the human brain is actually any different than any other animal's brains or do you think yes. we just use it differently <laughs> the greatest gift that the human mind has is the capacity to work with memories you don't think even animals that are considered very smart like not like, like not like human beings yeah. our consciousness is our own capacity to make systematic structures of thoughts uh. languages uh, different processes the animals also have the same thing but the structures are very innate so why do you think we were given that it, it was not that? given to us. this is a continuous happening the universe is constantly creating different structures, right? And then these structures come into contact with each other, creating more structures. So mind, now when when some scientists talk about mind, they don't talk about the mind inside our body. They talk about the mind outside. They say the mind is not inside, the mind is outside. The mind is this over mind that is responsible for regulating the temperature of your body we think it is inside right yes of course it is inside but it is equally outside the temperature of the planet is directly related to the temperature of the human body right yeah. and the temperature of the forest is directly related to the temperature of all animals living in the forest so if the forest gets too warm some might extinct and some might enjoy it only when when the planet was hottest hot we had large number of reptiles living in this planet who were of this you know their size was of this building so the planet is not taking care or it does not care about what we are thinking about life and itself right so what do we learn out of that whole witnessing how the nature works it's it's just trying to create structures out of 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 structure and every time it is coming into contact with new structures it is getting more complicated i have a question so if you stop creating the structure let's say if i am creating stories like continuously every second i'm creating a new story because i come in contact with everything around me and i come like I'm creating a different story with everything that I come come in contact with like for for example I came here and we're having this conversation right so now I go home and there's a, another new information in my mind and it, it repeats for some time you know it's there you know because this happened I mean for my mind it happened and let's say you know I become completely quiet and I stop putting information now I stop creating new stories it's just like it's just like I, I try to I mean I don't know how it's possible to create it completely blank but somehow I find a way to minimize the stories creating process now, chatters the chatters <laughs> so now the old chatters will gradually start to come up right and so and when the when you look after the old chatters but you know does this ever like really end like you know does this chatter like you know how deep all the information the that you are talking about is the information of the personality of whom the mask you are wearing. I hope you get the primordial chatters. You are not receiving the primordial chatters. You are not even listening to the primordial chatters. You are listening to the chatters of the personality called Akas that was given to you and that you worked with your whole life. Right? So are your chatters yours? That's probably what we have to let go of, <laughs> right?
is the things that aren't really us. We just need to witness it and then you are out of it, right? Mm. If you can really see like, okay, this is Akash, this is something that's underneath Akash and that's the real deal. And Akash is just this mask that has been soft on me since my childhood. Or since the time I was born in this planet. Well, what if you know that there is these two, there is this underneath, there is this being that you have no idea what it is or where it came from or you know absolutely nothing about it and you know up and there's this thing and you're the mask you know like the the person the voice the face the images Ideas, the information, information. The, philosophies, the ideologies yeah. everything yeah. Yeah. that's all that just all rubbish you know it's just the uh, uh, you it's know the rapper it's, it, well, it's, it's the, the drum rapper of the chocolate before the show. <laughs> it's the drum roll before yeah. the show all of that is relevant and all of that is important and all of that is playful and beautiful because you can wear any mask and be anyone and do anything and you can create yourself and refresh yourself and be new every day then you are not stuck with w the problems that you created yesterday you're not stuck with someone you left 10 years ago or 15 years ago you're not stuck with your heartbreaks and you're not stuck with your happiness you're free you're completely devoid of all kinds of self-limiting past memories and then you are free. So do you wake up with a completely renewed sense of me when you wake up every morning? Sometimes. That day it's a beautiful yeah, day. Yeah, ex exactly. It's a, today was really good. So the practice is just to wake up every day without any conditions, without any predispositions, with an absolute sense of being in the moment and that does not mean you stop planning you plan you know you like I write stories I leave it today tomorrow I come back and make it better it's like you are working with a book you are a book and you see that this is a book so you are working carefully with your book but at the same time you can create 10 other books because you see, Akas is just one book, and that you are not Akas. Yeah, that, that's actually. But there is that inner cosmic archetype that is playing the role. And you can meet that person once in a while. You can I have voice. absolutely no idea what that is, or, you know, but, uh, you know, and, but it's, it feels like, you know, I, I want to. I don't even know who want to know, Akas want to know, but you know, like, what is the nature of my being, you know, I, I have no idea and it's, it's kind of strange that I don't really know myself, but, you know, no, I, I don't know if most people do, but. It is something that cannot be said. It is something that has to be felt and seen. And the word seen means not with your eyes, you have to experience it in your being. Be there. Yeah. yeah. The only thing that I, you know, this is not that I think, but for me to like ever like convey it to you or anybody else about what the nature of this being is, and as far as I mean, I have tried experiences, is that you know, to know this being like you don't even like need to believe that it's like it's just there, you know, it's like breathing, you know, you don't ever believe in breathing because it's there, it's something that's happening continuously to experience it in like each and every cell of your body, you know, and but. So how can you, nobody can ever explain that, but... You can go on... And it's still, you know, I feel like I, I've, like, I've walked... You know, I'm just not, like, like you said, you know, earlier that, you know, it's, it's like just the... No, you have the, to see... What is not what boiled yet, you know? Holding. What, what you are holding so tightly about yourself, and that is creating the question. And the question is relevant, but the question is coming from a place of not surrendering into the mystery and unknown. Yeah, it's coming from a fear. And that fear is always self-limiting. That's true. So what are you holding so tightly and what are you trying to let go? I don't know about letting go, but I know there is something you must be holding very tightly. Maybe it's comfort. Maybe it's different kinds of fear, anything. So you have to find out what you are holding and you have to decide if you want to hold it or not. How do I not hold it? Decide that you don't want to hold it. 
<laughs> the mind is too stubborn to even like just like or, you know then you say i lose i'll just go and live my life then you cannot bother yourself every day with the same question is there like a sort of like practice like with a with letting go practice there might be 5000 practices you don't want to do practice every day you want to cut through it because the practice will never get you out you might do one practice 10 days one practice 3 months your life might be easy but then we have to ask did you decide and the moment you decide then it's done and the moment you decide you die because you are not taking care of the personality that you have been working with you have just been working with akash it's the greatest gift that has been given to you that you can play and if you can play that means you can play anyone and be anything and you can truthfully be that person and it's very important to play that character because the world is connections and communions and world is a single home right it's a universal family but that does not mean you give away your awareness and your understanding and your chance to understand what all this is about do you truly want to be free from all the suffering that is being created because of trying to be in a place and time where you know where you are not you no oh, wait i think i didn't hear Yes, I don't want to suffer and at the same time like I swear to put I just like in my life there have maybe been a special few people who I really love and miss and I don't want to let go of like any of them. Like I want those people to always be a part of my life. So that's the selfishness that we want them in our life, right? I know. So the true. see question is Katya if she embodies a a bit more gayan perspective might create lovingness in 100,000 people. Hmm. Yeah. Right? That's the goal. If if you can play that cosmic character, everyone has it. Hmm. And we decide that we want to attach with people because we fear that we'll not be loved. We will not find friends like them or we will be stuck in some illusory delusion of being ourselves and no one will be there to help us. Mm-hmm. Right? There is that always l- lingering behind when the mother sees the baby for the first time. She gets sad that this thing will grow up mm-hmm. and leave her. Mm-hmm. When she's deeply happy at the same time she's deeply sad. So so you you have we all have a clear choice do we want to embody our highest self which might be very difficult which might take 10 years 15 years 20 years and it's a it's a long term process of being in the moment every day and every moment or do we want to sustain one character and that's possible as well if you can see this you can sustain one character more carefully you can play with that character very very carefully because you see that this is a drama but what if you're stuck somewhere in the middle like that's your decision if you see it and you decide to stop get stuck <laughs> who can you're help like, you man you're like okay there's something beyond and okay like i have no clue what is that going on and at the same time you're afraid to let go because of your character that's the challenge that's the and challenge. it's so confusing what what should what should i do because it's like you see some people who are so into the matrix and see, you can't even like talk to them about it because they get freaked out you cannot help <laughs> anyone else you cannot help your father mother brother you cannot help anyone else the only thing that you can do is go mad with the beauty of universe so rumi is always alone rumi has no one because no one understands him and all of them cherish his poetry but he is always alone and he had only one person he loved his teacher and they killed his teacher right jesus was nailed because he <laughs> went mad he started living in the moment 
right? Yeah. Socrates was killed, poisoned, because he didn't give in to the systems and processes that the Greek leadership and politicians wanted him to do. You know, all, all kinds of people who have had the courage to decide to be mad were outcasted by the society and the country and the world as by Lars. The way, only way that the world cherishes them is when they die. When Pythagoras is alive and when they are burning his esoteric school, they don't care for him. And then he was killed. But then, 2500 years in, we are still reading Pythagoras. So it's your decision. Do you want to go mad and do you want to really, really see the world as it is? Or do you want to just play roles that is given to you by the family, by the society, by the political ideology? If you are born in Nepal, you follow a certain secular ideas that was given to you by the system, to your parents by the system, and then you follow it and you call yourself Nepali. And if you are born in China, you are a Chinese. If you are born in the United States, you are American. That is also unconditioning. Yeah, that is. And if you are going mad, it also means that you are going mad with all of these ideas of artificial structures. We are in an artificial structure that is feeding 1% of the world population. Are we not? And But at the same time, you know, like, so so what happens is whenever I do so, do so, whenever I, in, the, in the daytime, whenever I have to like, sit in the sun, you know, I just lay down and I look at the sky and I realize that it's all blue and and it's so strange, it's blue and well, yeah, it sounds, because sky, I mean Your eye sees it blue, you yeah. don't know if a crocodile sees it blue too Yeah, yeah that's, that's true actually, but See, that's also another condition but, but at the same time, we don't really know what's up there, you know, I mean and we are like, I mean, we are the only species that we know, I mean, only uh, planet that we have life and it's just it's like it's so strange you know I mean the whole way and we're like so consumed within our system and we are our little beliefs and we run through towards our little goals and our whole life just goes like that and we don't really know anything about ourselves and and even then you're scared of going mad and then there's another way there's <laughs> this that's the macro level and this the micro level you know and you close your eyes and at night you actually sleep I mean what what is that so what's the point of letting go if you can see that what is that? You know, like, what no, is what's going the point on? of letting go? If you are totally surrendered in that moment, that question is not there. You see that it's a dance. Macrocosmic, microcosmic, you go down to the Planck length, it's the same thing as the macrocosmic reality on the other end of the universe. Or are you just making it up? Are you seeing it and making it up? So the question is, are you willing to go mad? 